What's up guys, my name is Brandon and this past week has been a fun one. Not only did we get a new beta software release with iOS 14.7 beta 2, but we also got tons of new leaks and rumors about upcoming Apple products and even about iOS 15. So just as we do every weekend, let's go ahead and recap this week in Apple and most importantly the latest iOS release which is iOS 14.6 and of course the latest beta release which is iOS 14.7 beta 2. So we're going to talk about the latest leaks and rumors and iOS 15 and all of that after we discuss this software and a major issue with this latest beta, iOS 14.7 beta 2, that has actually affected quite a few users. So let's start off with that. So iOS 14.7 beta 2 was released to developers on Wednesday. And notice how I did not mention that it was released to public beta testers. And that's because it still hasn't been released for public beta testers. So there was a major bug in the developer build that has yet to be patched. And Apple isn't going to push out the public beta until it has been patched and fixed up. And that bug has to do with the SIM card. So some users, and this is actually a lot more widespread than I originally thought. So some users are reporting this SIM failed pop up, the SIM failed error after updating to iOS 14.7 beta 2 and unfortunately this is not just an annoying pop-up that doesn't really do anything this was an actual error because the users who get this have no cell service at all they cannot make or receive phone calls on ios 14.7 beta 2 and they had to manually downgrade back to ios either 14.7 beta 1 or back to ios 14.6 until apple fixes this so this appears to be, again, widespread, and it's affecting users who are using an eSIM instead of a regular SIM card. So if you're not using an eSIM, you likely did not have this error, but if you're using an eSIM, or if you're thinking about updating to iOS 14.7 beta 2, and you have an eSIM, you may wanna hold off because this is about as big of a bug as you can have in a beta release. So I'm not really sure how this happened, but yeah, if you have not updated to beta 2 yet and you have an eSIM, just hold off and wait for Apple to push out an update. And the crazy thing is that we still don't know exactly what is causing the bug. And there's no workaround aside from manually downgrading via your computer. So again, this is just another reason not to run developer betas on your main device. Only use a public beta if you're going to be installing these betas on your main device. Never use a developer beta on your main device. This should be yet another, you know, example of why you should not do that. And this is, you know, perfect timing with iOS 15 coming up. I know a lot of people are going to do it regardless, but just be prepared. There are going to be issues and bugs that will affect how you use your phone every single day. Now, as far as other changes in iOS 14.7 beta 2, we did also have a minor verbiage change here inside of settings and Siri and search, and then down to Siri and dictation history right here. So this paragraph down here, pretty much tells you a little bit more about this feature and you know just the verbiage has changed a little bit here in beta 2 compared to any previous version including beta 1. Also when it comes to the HomePod timers I did tell you guys that the text has been fixed so if we go down here to timers you can see that it's now fixed it does not show placeholder text there anymore you could tap on new timer and I actually notice that you can actually start multiple timers right here and you can name them as well so when you go to this you can name it Maybe if you have, you know, like something on the grill or if you need to, you know, a call starts at a certain time. So if I just say, you know, call, it could be whatever call it is. If that starts in, you know, 10 minutes, you could set that and you can have multiple timers going at one time right there. And you will see that the little outline around the play pause button right there actually moves along with the timer and they count down in real time. You can also ask your HomePod to tell you how much time is left on, for instance, like the call timer right there. So just a really cool feature for the HomePods here inside of this. And now also a lot of people did say that they weren't seeing the fix for this, but be sure that you are updating your HomePod as well to HomePod OS 14.7 beta 2. So a lot of people forget to do that and they only update their phone or maybe they don't have the beta profile installed for the HomePod, but you need the HomePod to be updated as well to see these changes. And if you're wondering what the timer sounds like when it goes off on the HomePod, I'll just play this so you can hear it. Hey Siri, clear timer. So that is what the timer sounds like on the home, but I really like the sound of that timer as well. And it really comes in handy in the kitchen. I've actually done it quite a few times since this beta was released. And then also if you wanted to remove these timers, there's of course an X right there, or you could just slide over and tap on delete 
just like so and you can get rid of the timers right there so definitely a nice addition here inside of the home application now something else that is not exclusive to ios 14.7 but has to do with the air tags is that there's actually a new air tag firmware update that is rolling out right now you can see here cnet broke the news that says apple bolsters air tag privacy measures will offer android detector app later this year so that's interesting and good news for android users who may be getting an air tag for whatever reason but uh yeah there's also a firmware update pushed out for the air tag and this update for the air tags will address some privacy concerns and if you're wondering about the exact number it's 1.0.276 that is the new firmware version, the updated firmware version for the AirTags. It shipped with 1.0.225. And if you don't know how to check your AirPods firmware version, all you need to do is go into the Find My application and just simply tap on the name right here and it will show the serial number and the firmware version. And as you can see there, mine have still not updated and the AirTags update just like the AirPods do. So you cannot force an update. There's no button to say, you know, update software, or update firmware. It just happens. You're just going to have to wait for it to roll out to your device and to your AirTag. But just know that there has been a new firmware version, a new firmware update for the AirTags, and it should happen automatically for yours with time. But overall, iOS 14.7 beta 2 is pretty much just a further bug fix update, you know, just really patching up these bugs before iOS 15 betas start rolling out. But we do also have some bugs here on 14.7 beta 2 still. Obviously, we have the big SIM failure bug. And also, I've been having some cellular connectivity issues very recently as well, really ever since updating to beta 2. So I've had some minor issues going from 5G to LTE. This is something I haven't had since like iOS 14.4, I believe, 14.3. So switching from LTE to 5G just results in, you know, a good 30 seconds of just no connectivity and everything just doesn't load. It's really annoying and I haven't had that in quite a while, but it has come back here in 14.7 beta 2, unfortunately. And that's kind of paired with the SIM failure bug. So beta 2 is definitely Definitely worse than beta 1 just because of those two bugs alone so I would definitely avoid beta 2 if you are not already on it also when it comes to the Apple music queue bug so of course when you go into the queue right here the first song sometimes is not able to be moved there's been instances where it just kind of appears after like 10 seconds but more often than not I need to go out of the queue and back into it and that's when the three lines appear and I can move that first song right there so still not fully fixed and it's the same with the airplay to HomePod feature as well this is still really buggy so for instance if I'm playing a song right here and I go ahead and try to play this on the office right here sometimes when I press play and you can see it right here it starts playing on the HomePod but it's not even showing that it's playing here on the now playing screen I have to manually go in here go to this and then go to office and then tap out of it to get this on my now playing screen right there so it's really annoying and just very clunky it just doesn't work how I want it to work it should play you know it should show me the controls for that song when I play it on you know through airplay right here I shouldn't have to do what I just did to be able to control the music like that and when it comes to the green tint a lot of people are still reporting that green tint is an iOS 14.7 beta 2 however some people have said that 14.7 beta 1 and beta 2 have improved green tint since iOS 14.6 so that is good news but unfortunately it's still not fully resolved for some people and again I don't have that issue so I cannot test it or really confirm anything with you guys related to that now when it comes to the performance performance is pretty much exactly the same for me here on beta 2 compared to beta 1 I've really not noticed any difference at all when it comes to performance when it comes to RAM management really anything at all and again I use this on my main device my iPhone 12 Pro here I use every single you know the latest betas on that device and i've not been able to tell any difference going from beta one to beta two now when it comes to battery life battery life is the same thing i mean i really have no complaints and i actually read in the comments that some are getting better battery life than on beta one so there are still many people though that are on the public release of ios 14.6 reporting bad battery drain and just not being able to wait to update to ios 14.7 but again just use caution if you are using an eSIM. i would not update to beta 2 if you're using an eSIM. just wait for apple to push out another update to fix that before updating and also cell connectivity in general has just not been the best here on beta 2. so really taking and giving with this update you know you're taking better performance but you're giving up 
you know, the cell connectivity and the potential to just have no signal at all if you have an eSIM. So now what is next for Apple? So next week, really just in two days, we're seeing iOS 15 for the first time. So we will see iOS 15 beta one right there on Monday, June 7th. So that of course is what everybody's looking forward to. However, when it comes to iOS 14, iOS 14.7 has been on a two week beta cycle. However, since we have that big, you know, SIM card error, the SIM failure bug, I would expect to see a new beta release next week as well for iOS 14.7. Now there is also the possibility that Apple just completely skips beta two for public beta testers and just releases beta three the following week on the week of the 14th, but we'll have to wait and see. And again, all eyes are going to be on iOS 15 really come next week. Now, as for other Apple news, aside from the software, we also had quite a few interesting leaks and rumors this past week, including information on the upcoming MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, the redesigned iPad mini, the 2022 iPad Pro, more iOS 15 rumors and more. So let's start off by talking about the next MacBook Pro, because these are basically confirmed at this point to be coming and being announced at WWDC next week. So I did make a full video on these new MacBook Pros earlier in the week, but since then, even more sources have come out of the woodwork and mentioned a new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro coming at WWDC. So just a couple of days ago, Mac rumors discovered that the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros were filed in the Chinese regulatory database, which is something that Apple usually does just before announcing a product. So that was one further hint that this product, you know, this new MacBook was coming, but then Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives also said to expect a new MacBook Pro by saying, quote, Apple is planning a few surprises, including the announcement of the new MacBook Pros. And that was in a note that was seen by Mac rumors just a couple of days ago. He also mentioned that the upcoming iPhone 13 lineup will feature one terabyte storage options, which of course is double what we have on the iPhone 12, which is 512 gigabytes. He also said that Apple plans to announce their AR glasses, which is probably going to be called the Apple glasses at WWDC next year in 2022, followed by the Apple car in 2024. So some very interesting news there from that Wedbush analyst, but obviously the new MacBook Pros are probably the most exciting since they are just days away from being announced. And if you want to know all about these specs and the redesign, like I said, watch that video I uploaded earlier in the week. That tells you everything you need to know about this upcoming M1X or M2, whatever it's going to be called MacBook Pro. Now, as for products coming later in the year and next year, Mark Gurman just published a new report a couple of days ago that gives us details on the upcoming redesigned iPad mini and the 2022 iPad Pro. So later this year, the iPad mini will be getting its first redesign in six years. And Gurman says that it's planned to have smaller borders, so smaller bezels around the edges, while the removal of its home button has also been tested. So it seems that the design is not final yet, but Apple is considering removing the home button and making the bezel smaller around the screen. So obviously smaller bezels is probably going to happen. It's not going to be edge to edge like the iPad Pro, but we are going to have more narrow borders. So just less bezel all around and the possibility of having no home button as well. There's no word on whether or not the iPad mini will get the M1 chip, but we'll have to wait and see. And I'd actually kind of be surprised if the cheap iPad mini got that M1 chip, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Now, we also got news on the 2022 iPad Pro, and this is going to be interesting because German says that it will have a glass back instead of an aluminum back like it's always had since inception. So this will allow for not only wireless charging, but Apple is also testing out reverse wireless charging. So we might even be able to charge our iPhones and our AirPods from setting them on the back of the iPad Pro. So that would be amazing. We heard about that possibly coming to the iPhone, you know, last year or years ago, and it just never happened. So they could be doing it with the iPad. And along with that, Apple is also testing air power still. Yes, Apple still wants to release air power and they're apparently just still trying to get it right. They've gone through tons of trials and tribulations over the years, but apparently air power is still a thing 
at this point if anybody even cares anymore and then as for a new macbook air those are coming in 2022 with that mini led screen so i know a lot of people wanted a new macbook air later this year but it appears that those are actually coming next year with that mini led screen and then finally we have a few more ios 15 rumors to share before we see it officially unveiled on monday so just yesterday the wall street journal's joanna stern tweeted out this quote i hear there are big updates coming to safari health maps and imessage at wwdc next week so we heard about the health and the imessage changes but it appears that apple is also working on big updates to safari and to the maps applications as well so we really didn't get any further details but it should be interesting to see more updates coming to safari and maps like i said nothing major in terms of these you know rumors but they are two applications that we really didn't hear anything about over the past several months about ios 15. and really the leaks have been very limited for ios 15 and ipad os 15. we really haven't seen too much when it comes to the new software version so i'm really excited to see what we actually get so there you have it guys that is a recap of this past week in apple including more updates on ios 14 beta 7 and really a warning maybe not to update it if you have an eSIM. so it's crazy to think that we're just days away from seeing ios 15. i can't wait if you guys can't wait and also if you enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and also make sure you guys subscribe because you will not want to miss my ios 15 coverage i'm going to be going hard on that i will be live streaming and everything on monday as well so definitely definitely stay tuned for that but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you on the live stream on monday for ios 15.